Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own All Secrets Keep or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Lisbeth underscore one, and you can find the link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Celine. All Secrets Keep, Chapter 19 Sarah Scourge had been left behind at the warehouse, dropped and forgotten in favor of getting to Tally, getting her to safety. Sarah didn't even realize she didn't have it with her, until they reached the encampment and she reached down to her belt, hand closing around nothing. She hesitated only for a second, reaching around to the other side of her belt and grabbing her service knife. She wasn't going to let not having a scourge stop her. The storm had started raging long before the fighting ever did. It wasn't just Sarah's this time, though. She could feel Petra's work in the air, adding to hers, strengthening the already wild storm. The strike team had entered first, taking out the various dampeners around the encampment, and the moment they were all down, the first crack of thunder had echoed so loudly Nicta could feel the answer vibrating in her chest. It had been a long time since she had fought by Sarah Alder's side. She had seen her power briefly in the warehouse when they had rescued Tally, but there had been only ten of the Camarilla there then. Now, even armed with only a knife and her voice, Sarah was a force of nature, and Nicta got the inkling feeling that wiping out the Camarilla at the encampment they were at wouldn't take long. It was raining so hard that Nicta could hardly see. Petra had sent the strike team inside to clear out the building while Sarah, Nicta and herself stayed outside to fight everyone else before going in to help. The ground had basically been turned to mud underneath Nicta's feet, and her two big boots squelched constantly, slipping as she spun with a burrowed skirt in her hand. She could hear Sarah yelling, only half of her screams actually work, her outline a blur as she was somehow still graceful, even in the slick mud underneath her feet. If Nicta had thought Sarah was powerful before, it was nothing compared to the way Sarah was fighting now. She had never seen Sarah more focused, more vengeful than the Sarah that was fighting alongside her now. She had never before seen a Sarah Alder who was driven by love. Nicta would die before she ever admitted it to anyone, but this Sarah scared her. Petra kept the Camarilla off of Sarah's back, allowing Sarah to fight hand to hand without fear of being attacked from behind, and Nicta took it upon herself to protect Petra, killing anyone who so much as glanced in her direction. It worked for a little while. It wasn't until they were all inside, too many bodies, both living and dead, pressed into a small room and fighting each other. Did something go wrong? Nicta's boots were still coated with mud, and she slipped, losing her footing as she lashed out with her scourge at someone. The Camarilla she had been aiming for grabbed her by the hood. Why did these combat jackets have hoods anyway? And threw her roughly into the ground. Her head cracked against the floor, and she grunted in pain. She tried to sit up, but her vision swam, pain lancing through her head. The Camarilla member who had thrown her against the ground stood over her, pressing his boots into her chest, and brought his knife down in an arch. Nicta's hand flew up 
grabbing the blade with her hand and squeezing, trying to force it away from her body. The blade bit into her palm, and she grunted again, bringing her other hand up to help push it away. The Camarilla loomed over her, pressing down with his entire body, and Nicta felt the blade slice deeper into her palm, ripping. Blood slicked down her hand, and then, suddenly, there were arms wrapped around the neck of the man leaning over her, and a sickening crack sounded as his head snapped to the side, neck breaking. His lifeless body was thrown roughly to the side, and Nicta gasped in pain as the knife was ripped out of her hand with it. She looked up, eyes wide, at Petra, kneeling down next to her with a worried expression on her face. Are you okay? Nicta sat up, gritting her teeth against the pain in her head and hand. I'm fine, thanks to you. She tried to sound sincere, but the room was spinning lightly, and she was almost certain she was slurring her words. Hit my head, I think. Come on, Petra rose, grabbing Nicta's arm as she stood, dragging her to her feet. We're almost done here. Nicta didn't even have time to respond before Petra's eyes suddenly widened at something over her shoulder, and her grip on Nicta's arm tightened. The room spun even more as Petra suddenly stepped forward, pivoting slightly and forcefully throwing Nicta behind her. Nicta stumbled forward as Petra let go of her arm, and the pained cry that Nicta heard leave Petra's mouth seemed to slow time around her. Nicta spun back around, ignoring the way the world underneath her shifted as she did so, and felt her stomach drop. Petra had, for some reason, thrown her out of the way to take the blow that had been meant for her. Petra staggered backwards, hands flying up to her stomach to where there was now a knife sticking out of it, and Nicta flung herself forward, catching her. A scream left Nicta's mouth, both a work and not, and the man that had stepped Petra turned away, picking up the knife that had once been in Nicta's hand and plunged it into his own throat. Nicta turned, still holding Petra in her arms, and screamed again. All work this time. Her throat burned with the force of it, and her vision was still swimming to the point of making her nauseous. But she watched as the rest of the Camarilla in the room, so many, too many, more than she had ever pushed at once without using the bombs, all suddenly stopped what they were doing and turned their weapons against themselves and against each other. Nicta's field of view narrowed to the woman bleeding in her arms the one who had stupidly, so stupidly, risked her life for Nicta's. Her eyes were closed, and Nicta's whole body began to shake, sinking to the floor, unable to stand any longer. Nicta's knees hit the ground, and Petra slid slowly to the floor, Nicta's arms shaking too much to hold onto her properly. There was blood, so much blood, spilling from Petra's wound, the knife buried almost to the hilt in her stomach. A strange hand suddenly reached out to grab the knife's handle, and Nicta saw red. No! She blindly reached up, shoving whoever the hand belonged to away from Petra, opening her mouth to yell again. It was abruptly cut off as she was grabbed by her hood again, a strong grip forcing her to her feet and pulling her away from Petra and whoever was daring to hurt her again. No, Nicta snarled, even as she was pushed back against the wall. Don't touch her! Don't fucking touch her! A cold hand wrapped itself around her throat, just above her collarbone, and an arm was pressed into her chest, pinning her against the wall. Nicta! Nicta! Sarah's elbow dug into the top of Nicta's stomach, and Nicta's wild brown eyes dragged themselves away from Petra to look at her. You have to let them help her. Nicta's chest was heaving under the force of Sarah's arm against her sternum, and her fists clenched at her sides, slamming back into the wall behind her. Sarah, they're gonna... Sarah pressed her arm more firmly into Nicta's chest. It's just the fixer. Nicta swallowed hard, 
head jerking back to once again look at Petra, only to see that Sarah was right. It was one of the soldiers from the strike team, bearing the patch of the medic. She was holding Petra's hand in her own, eyes closed and brow furrowed in concentration. The knife was no longer in Petra's stomach. The red slowly began to fade from Nicholas' vision, and she stopped struggling against Sarah, body going limp. She felt Sarah relax her grip, only slightly, and she found her breath coming a little easier. Stupid, she heard herself mutter, seeing Sarah furrow her brow out of the corner of her eye. She didn't take her eyes off of Petra and the fixer. So fucking stupid. Why would you do that? What has gotten into you? Sarah's voice was far too soft, too curious, and Nicta looked back at her. Her mouth opened, but no words came out. Sarah's eyes were searching her face. I've never seen you like this before, you... Sarah blinked, tilting her head. Nicta's eyes were wide, and she stared at Sarah helplessly, suddenly feeling very exposed, and more pinned down by the taller woman's gaze than her arm. You went and fell in love. Nicta tried to recoil from Sarah's words, but couldn't move from where she was trapped against the wall. Let me go. Her voice sounded strange in her ears. Are you going to attack my soldier again? Sarah's voice was low. Nicta shook her head. No. Sarah eyed her for a second before slowly releasing her grip on Nicta, stepping away from the wall. Nicta was frozen where she stood, eyes still wide and watching Petra, and the fixer opened her eyes as Sarah walked over. General, the fixer let go of Petra's hand. Petra still hadn't opened her eyes. I stabilized her and stopped the bleeding, but we need to return to Fort Salem as soon as possible. She needs to see Colonel Wick. Sarah nodded. She looked too calm. Understood. We can return now. Tell your team to prep the truck to receive a patient. Yes, ma'am. The fixer scrambled to her feet and ran off to find her team. Nicta finally forced herself away from the wall watching as Sarah knelt down and lifted the unconscious Petra. We're leaving now? Sarah turned to look at her, shoulders rolling to hold Petra more firmly in her arms. Considering you killed the dozen of Camarilla remaining the moment she got hurt, there is no reason for us to stay. Her eyes narrowed at Nicta. I didn't know you could push that many at once without the bombs. Nicta's skin prickled and she clenched her fists again, feeling the slick blood and sting of pain in her injured hand. She turned away from Sarah, jaw tense. Neither did I. The ground was moving underneath Petra when her eyes finally opened again, the rumble of the truck engine cluing her into the fact that they were on the way back to Fort Salem. The cold grey metal of the ceiling of the truck bed was the only thing that greeted her, when her eyes finally opened the whole way. She went to sit up, only to be met with a sharp pain in her side that caused her to gasp, wincing as she fell back onto the stretcher beneath her. Bells. The voice to her left was strangled, relieved, and Petra turned to look at who had spoken. It was Nicta. Of course it was Nicta, Petra thought. No one else would ever dare to call her anything other than General, or perhaps Petra, depending on who they were. Nick. She looked away from Nicta to look down at her stomach, coat torn and covered in blood, a bandage peeking out from underneath the torn fabric. What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Nicta almost laughed hysterically. You stupidly threw yourself in front of a knife that was meant for me. That's what happened. Petra rolled her head over to look at Nicta again. Her eyes widened and whatever she had been going to say was forgotten as she saw a stray tear roll down Nicta's face. Unshed ones gathered in her eyes. You're crying. Nicta stiffened, turned away to wipe furiously at her eyes. She tried to force out a laugh, but it came out sounding more like a strangled sob. <laughs> yeah. Crying cause the only thing standing between me and a grisly death at Sarah Alder's hands almost fucking died. Nick. 
Petra said again, softer this time. She slowly reached out and took Nicta's uninjured hand in her own. Nicta didn't turn to look back at her, but she gripped Petra's hand back, squeezing it tightly. Why the hell did you do it? Nicta was staring straight ahead, at the back of the truck, but she was holding onto Petra's hand like it was her lifeline. You're the fucking commander of the armed forces. You can't be risking your life and taking blows for a terrorist. Petra sighed and looked back at the roof of the truck. You risked your life, Abigail. I owed you one. Nick sighed angrily, turning to look back at Petra. For fuck's sake, Bells. I didn't risk my life for your daughter so that you would owe me one. I did it because I care about... Nick's eyes widened and she cut herself off leaning back against the wall, away from Petra. Her, she finished lamely. Her eyes were darting around the back of the truck, which was suddenly too small, too hot. She hoped what she had almost said, the you that almost slipped out of her mouth, hadn't been noticed. Hey, she felt Petra squeeze her hand, and she chanced to glance back over at her swallowing when she met Petra's soft brown eyes. Petra was quiet for a moment as they stared at each other, but then she squeezed Nicta's hand again and spoke. Voice soft. I care about... her too. It was very early in the morning when they returned to Fort Salem. The sun still had yet to rise as Sarah all but ran to the infirmary, to where she knew Telly was not even bothering to change out of her combat gear. She was tired and sore, muscles aching in a way that they hadn't for a very long time. But all that paled in comparison to the need to see Tally. The infirmary was dimly lit when she walked in, and all of the beds were empty, save for two. Tally was on one, covers pulled up to her chin, sound asleep. Abigail and Rael were on the cot next to her, a tangle of limbs and blankets as they lay pressed up against one another in order to both fit on the narrow bed. Sarah quietly made her way over to the bed with the two cadets snuggled together on it and had to fight back a quiet laugh when she noticed Rael's mouth hanging wide open, drooling into the pillow beneath her. She reached down and gently shook Abigail's shoulder. Abigail's eyes opened slowly licking her lips sleepily as she turned her head to look up at who was waking her. Her eyes met Sarah's, and suddenly every trace of sleepiness left her, whole body stiffening. General! She went to sit up, but Sarah put a hand on her shoulder, stopping her. Rael groaned lightly in her sleep at Abigail's movements, burrowing her head further into the pillow they were sharing. It is, Abigail, Sarah said softly watching the girl immediately relax at her words. Your mother was taken back to the general's private room in the infirmary. Abigail's eyes immediately widened. What? Her voice was panicked, and Rael shifted in her sleep again. She's going to be okay, Sarah quickly assured her. Colonel Wick is with her now, but she was hurt during the fight. I just thought you would want to know. Once Colonel Wick is done with her, you will be allowed to go back and see her. Abigail's were still wide, but she nodded at Sarah's words, looking only slightly panicked still. Thank you, ma'am. Sarah nodded in return, her eyes lifting from Abigail's to look over at Telly in the bed next to them. How is she? she asked softly. Abigail did sit up in bed at this, untangling herself from Riel's grasp. She leaned back against the headboard and looked over at Telly. Anacostia had to put her to sleep on the way back here, she said quietly. She was, well, traumatized, I guess. She really thought for a bit there that you were gonna die for her, and then when you left again, it was impossible to calm her down. She was afraid that something was going to happen to you. I wish I could have stayed. Sarah felt Abigail turn her gaze to look back at her, but she didn't take her eyes off of Telly. Her bruises had been healed and the blood cleaned off of her face. Her lips were no longer blue and she looked so peaceful that if you hadn't known what you had just gone through, you never would have been able to guess it. She knows, Abigail offered up gently, 
Sarah looked at her for a brief moment before looking at Telly again. I'm sure she knows. She was just scared. Just in love. I know the feeling. The words were out of Sarah's mouth before she could stop them, and she sighed deeply, closing her eyes. General? Sarah's eyes opened again, looking at Abigail, waiting for her to speak. Tally is one of the most important people in my life. Abigail's voice was shaking slightly, but her gaze was unwavering as she stared Sarah down. I know she loves you more than anything, but... What if next time they don't want to make a deal? What if they just... Abigail, believe me when I tell you that I have had that thought cross my mind more times than you could possibly imagine these last twenty-four hours. Sarah interrupted her with a sigh. She went back to looking at Telly, her heart aching. Being loved by Telly. There is nothing quite like it in the world. I feel as if I have been waiting all my life for her. But I fear that loving Telly in return will only serve to hurt her. She will always be a target because of it. Sarah? Sarah raised her eyebrows at the use of her first name from the younger bellwether, but she didn't reprimand her this time. I'm not asking you to not love Telly or to not be with her for her safety or anything like that, Abigail clarified. I'm just asking that you always do everything possible to try to keep her safe. Sarah was unable to hold back the small smile at Abigail's words. That is something you will never have to worry about with me. Tally's safety is always my priority. Abigail gave Sarah a small smile back. The pretended bellwether smirk that Sarah had seen on Petra's face all too many times before. Good. She side-eyed the sleeping Tally before turning back to look at Sarah. You know... I'm sure it would make her really happy to know that you're back. She needs her rest, Sarah replied with a sigh. And I need to change. She gestured to the combat gear that she was still wearing, covered in dried mud and blood, that thankfully wasn't her own. Abigail just nodded in response. Sarah turned slightly, eyes still on Tally. If she wakes up before I come back, tell her I am sorry that I could not stay with her last night and that I will be back soon. Abigail nodded again. Yes, ma'am. Sarah gave Abigail a thankful nod in return, finally managing to tear her eyes away from Telly as she turned and left the infirmary. Abigail snuggled back up to Riel as she walked out. The sun had just barely risen over Fort Salem by the time Telly finally opened her eyes. She blinked sleepily, turning her head over to the cot to where her sisters had been sleeping only to find it empty. She had barely time to wonder where they could have gone, before she heard a soft noise behind her, a light shuffling of feet and a quiet sigh. She rolled over, making sure to keep the covers pulled up, not quite willing to lose the warmth of the bed just yet, and sucked in a quiet gasp at the sight that greeted her. Sarah was sleeping in a chair next to her bed, leaned back with her head lolled slightly onto one shoulder. Her hair was slightly damp from a recent shower, pulled back in a loose braid and draped over her shoulder. The jacket that she had given Telly, and that had been hanging on the post while Telly slept, was now being used as a makeshift blanket, pulled up over Sarah's chest and shoulders. Telly swallowed at the sight, shakily sitting up in bed. Sarah... Her voice was barely more than a whisper, but Sarah's eyes flew open at the sound anyway, the jacket slipping off of her shoulders as she sat up straight in the chair. Tally. Her name was a sigh of relief as it left the other woman's mouth, and Tally felt tears spring to her eyes at the sound of it. Tally, Sarah said again, and before Tally could even move, Sarah was off the chair and sitting on the bed with her. Jacket forgotten as it fell onto the floor. Tally was pulled into Sarah's arms and she clung to her desperately, wrapping her arms around Sarah's neck as she crawled into her lap, legs on either side of her waist. It was definitely inappropriate, crossing the line of what was acceptable to show in public between general and cadet, but Tally couldn't bring herself to care, and judging by the way Sarah was holding on to her, drawing Telly so close that they were pressed up against one another 
neither did she. I'm so sorry, she felt Sarah whisper, her apology a hot breath on Telly's ear. I'm so sorry I couldn't stay. No, Telly's eyes were squeezed shut against the sting of hot tears that she felt. No, it's okay. I know you needed to go with them. She felt Sarah pull back slightly, a gentle touch on her skin as Sarah stroked her cheek. I'm still sorry. Tally opened her eyes to find Sarah looking at her, and Sarah wordlessly wiped away the tear that slipped down Tally's face. You're here now, Tally said firmly, feeling the ache in her throat as she held back more tears. That's all I care about. Sarah nodded, bringing her other hand up so she could cup Tally's face with her hands, and she kissed Tally's forehead before bringing her own to rest against Tally's. And I'm not going anywhere, she said fiercely. I promise. Please find a fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive. 